This video is designed to show you exactly, in a simple test, what is the best ISO for your camera. So let's get started with that. Before we conduct our test, let's go over some settings that you need to make sure that you have correct in your camera. First off, you want to be shooting in RAW format. It's a good idea to have mirror lockup on so you don't introduce any vibration. Set your exposure compensation to zero. Your high ISO speed noise reduction and long exposure noise reduction off. So regardless of what lens you're using or telescope or that sort of thing, what we're going to do is use the same exposure time for each shot and in the case of a lens the same aperture. The only variable will be your ISO and you need to shoot that in full stop increments. For my Canon 6D I'll be using ISO 200, 400, 800, 1600, 3200, 6400, and 12,800. So basically your ISO is going to double each time and it's important that you have an odd number of shots and in this case seven. Let me show you why that is. To make sense out of this, let me show you my shots and what you're seeing here is the seven individual ISO settings that I changed for each shot. The reason you need an odd number is because you need a center point to work from and in my case it's 1600 ISO. So by shooting 200, 400, 800, 1600, 3200, 6400 and 12,800 I'll be able to plug this into editing software the easiest most likely being Lightroom and for the 200 ISO shot I'll move the exposure slider plus three to match the 1600. I'll move the 400 ISO shot plus two to match the 1600, plus one on 800. And then I'll come down, I'll do the same thing to the 3200 shot, except reduce it by one, reduce the 6400 by two, and the 12,800 minus three. And that's to give us an even brightness amongst all of these photographs so that we can then determine by looking at them which one will be the most effective in the ISO range. It's irrelevant if your camera is identical to the Canon 6D. Look at this Canon 1000D for example. You don't need seven shots, you just need an odd number. And here we have 100, 200, 400, 800, and 1600. We can use five for the test and keep 400 ISO as your basis. So I used a Rokinon 14mm f2.8 with the Canon 6D. I put all seven of my shots into Adobe Lightroom. I'm now going to the develop module. What you're looking at is the 12,800 ISO shot. Sorry it's in landscape mode on its side but I just shot over the top of my roof here but anyway you go down to where you see exposure and like I showed you earlier for the 12,800 I'll reduce it by minus three I find it easier just to type the number minus three into the box rather than trying to use the slider because it's a little bit touchy and then you'll go do the 6400 minus two the 3200 minus one etc or based on whatever camera you're using you follow those steps and we'll save each photo and then compare them and look at the amount of noise in each photograph. We'll easily be able to find out what the optimum ISO setting is for our camera. It's as easy as that. So I've got all seven images saved and as you can see I've maintained a very consistent brightness in each image. You can't detect much at first glance 
but as we zoom in, we'll use the region of Orion, and you'll be able to see the difference in noise in the next shots. Now mind you, I use 10 second exposures for each of these photographs, and you can use whatever you like. I just used 10 seconds because I've done it from a stationary tripod, and that's to show that you don't need a tracking mount to conduct this test. I mentioned it in a previous video, the ISO relates to light amplification, and really higher ISOs often are less noisier than lower ones. So let's get a little bit closer than this, and I'll put the numbers up and give you an idea of what's going on here with the Canon 6D. Like I said, do this with your camera also. But don't just limit it to an ISO invariance test. Pay close attention to the histograms of each photo as you move through them and see exactly what's happening with it. And you'll learn a lot about what settings you need to be at with your camera and your location. So here's all the corresponding ISO levels for each photograph. And one's immediate thought would be that a lower ISO means lower noise. As you can see, that's not true here. The Canon 6D is a highly ISO invariant camera. That's why it's a really good pick for astrophotography. Your results will probably vary a whole lot more than mine. But let's just look at one more photo of a difference between a lower ISO and a higher ISO. You can easily see in this comparison that 1600 is the clear winner between the two as far as noise goes. You're going to have a lot more smoother image and overall better signal to noise. So assuming that a lower ISO is less noise is wrong. I give credit to Lonely Spec for this test. I got it from his website and it's just great information. I wanted to put it in video form for everybody. I highly recommend that you test your camera and look for its ISO invariance. You'll learn a lot about it. You'll learn a lot about the histogram of your shots and you'll know exactly where you need to be for your exposures, which is really important for optimizing a shot. Thank you. If you got a few minutes and you're interested in a new channel for astronomy or astrophotography, please check out Bayou City Astronomy. There'll be a link at the end of my video. He does some excellent lunar and planetary work. Has some really cool flybys and stuff to see. Definitely something there that will interest you. But show a little bit of support and drop by if you have a few moments. It would be greatly appreciated. I am smarter than you. Now you may want to leave me here. But... So apparently, Quite a few of my viewers think that I sound like Eugene from Walking Dead. And up until I did a search, I didn't know who that was, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Wow, okay. So, that's all I got.